Hello everyone. Welcome to our presentation on k-means clustering. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of clustering in machine learning with a special focus on the widely used k-means algorithm. We'll explore its core concepts, step-by-step -step mechanics, and practical applications. So, let's get started and uncover how this powerful technique can help us make sense of complex data. All right, let's start with the basics. What exactly is k-means? Well, k-means is a machine learning method that sorts data points into k different groups or clusters. It assigns each data point to the group whose center, centroid, is closest to it. This helps group similar data together without needing preset labels. Think of it like organizing items into categories based on their similarities, no prior knowledge required. Now, let's talk about how k-means works. The main goal of k-means is to ensure that data points within a cluster are very similar to each other while being very different from points in other clusters. It achieves this by minimizing the distance between each data point and its cluster center. So, when should you use k-means? It's popular because it's simple and effective for many tasks. For example, in marketing, it can be used to group customers to tailor strategies. In image compression, it reduces colors to compress images. For document organization, it helps manage large sets of documents. And in security, it identifies unusual patterns that might indicate threats. K-means is a simple but powerful algorithm used to group similar data into clusters. The process starts by picking a number K, which tells us how many clusters we want. Then, it randomly places K centroids, those are like the centers of each cluster. Each data point gets assigned to the nearest centroid. After that, the algorithm recalculates where the centroids should be based on the points in each cluster. It repeats this process again and again until the centroids stop moving much and the clusters stabilize. One of the trickiest parts of using k-means is deciding how many clusters to use. A common method is the elbow method, where you plot the error for different k-values and look for the bend or elbow in the line. That's usually a good spot. Another way is the silhouette score, which measures how well each point fits into its cluster, with higher scores meaning better grouping. The gap statistic compares your data to random data to find the best k. In the end, choosing the right k often comes down to a mix of these methods and some real-world knowledge about the data. k-means is popular for a reason. It's easy to understand and works fast, even with large datasets. It gives clear results when the clusters are tight and round, and it always finds a solution because it's guaranteed to converge. k-means clustering has some limitations. First, you need to specify the number of clusters, k, in advance. It's also sensitive to where the initial centroids are placed, which can affect the final results. Additionally, k-means struggles with clusters that aren't spherical or overlap, and it's sensitive to outliers in the data. k-means clustering, a party analogy. Imagine a party where guests naturally gather around different snack tables. Just like that, k-means clustering groups similar data points together. Each table is a cluster center, and people move to the closest one. This fun analogy helps explain how data forms clusters based on distance. Step 1. Initialization of centroids. Before the party starts, you place empty snack tables randomly in the room. These are the initial centroids, starting points for grouping guests. In k-means, we begin by placing cluster centers at random spots before assigning any data to them. Step 2. Assignment step. Guests arrive and choose the closest snack table. In k-means, this is the assignment step. Each data point joins the nearest cluster. Now we start seeing natural groupings form as everyone finds their spot. Step 3. Update step. Once guests settle around their snack tables, move each table to the center of its group. This is like recalculating the centroid in k-means clustering. It reflects the average location of all the data points assigned to that cluster. Step four, repeat until convergence. Guests reevaluate if they're at the closest table and might switch groups. Afterward, tables are moved again to the center of their new groups. 
This process repeats until no one switches tables and the tables stop moving, indicating that the clusters have stabilized. While it has its limits with more complex shapes or unevenly sized groups, it's still a great go-to tool for many clustering tasks. If you're looking for a quick and effective way to explore your data, k-means is a solid choice.